I, I, I'm in Bond for almost nine years. Um, I have uh, uh, multiple roles and then uh, the principal director of the company, author signatory of the company. I'm also a strong believer um, in women's empowerment and I started creating all women's QA, all women's FA, all women's project manager in the initial days. Now that we are growing fast and then we cannot have significance uh, having only women covers because it's almost 2000 people. Um, I always respect people, especially when you uh, have uh, people like uh, um, Uttra or Briti or Hema, or whatever, right? It's very important for all of us to know that they are able to stress a lot, they are able to work hard, and then they are able to contribute a lot for the success of the organization. And they, they keep contributing. They, they just don't get uh, tired or worked up. That's the significance of bond. Especially when you look at as an organization, uh, uh, Neeraja, um, it's a very interesting organization. Very few companies in India, at least this kind of a segmentation or digital uh, commerce or e-commerce in general. Very few companies, especially having awards uh, close to awards and global presence. We were acquired by Tech Magandra two years back. So uh, the credentials or identity for people in bond the technology that we use here in Bond is always so you can understand the people who are available. We, I thought of coming on a call for five minutes and then explaining and introducing you as well. Um, that's very relevant here in Bond because the IQ level or EQ level or the expectation or even to go ex, one step extra, the BQ level, Bond quotient is also very, very high level for people uh, in Bond. So that is what I just wanted to talk about uh, the women employees of Bond. They are flexible, especially the key people, the senior people, Hema, Britti and all. They used to even travel to the outside uh, India and then they come back overnight, we'll be asking them to, the flexibility, the balance, right? The, the uh, right attitude in place is what I just wanted to talk about my people here, especially women employees. Uh, we also have grown from 2% to 12 to 18 to 24 to 28.2 now. So I'm committed to my fellow colleagues from the Women's Committee that it will grow to 32 to 33 next year. We have, we have uh, uh, significantly high in terms of women and uh, numbers in bond. So that is also one of the inputs I uh, give it to you. The expectations are uh, high in general because of the management, because of the industry, because of the uh, domain that we focus, right? Anything and everything is commerce now. Everything is digital nowadays, whether you are going to, maybe we are making people lazy, sitting at home and then asking for pizza to uh, masal dosa or whatever, because it is arrived. So they don't even want to go out and then uh, have something, right? So now that's the trend. And we are the pioneer in digital and, and we are global and we are able to, uh, give uh, complete empowerment and engagement and uh, enrichment for people, the empowerment to engagement. That's what uh, it's available for every women employee. Very less attrition compared to any other organization. And they are very and highly uh, qualified people who are able to uh, have maximum trust and fight. With that, I'll stop. And also uh, to the uh, people, uh, to the team here, uh, please uh, be interactive. She is very inspiring professional from outside. She has done a lot of uh, this kind of a program for many companies, many uh, forums and many events. And she has got close to 15 years or more than that uh, experience. And it's important, right? The investment that we are making, especially the time is very important. Anything, right? Uh, reserve uh, 20, 15 minutes, be interactive, take uh, anything related to your career development, maybe your work life balance or, or stress or whatever related uh, will be useful for her to address. Over to you, uh, Neeraj. I would like to uh, get really because no one wants to see my face here. So you go ahead with my uh, people. Any Anything else uh, required from my end, uh, Neeraj? No, I think uh, it was so glad, uh, good that you came on board and set a context and it is important. 
it is important to know that it is a top-down approach. The leaders are very supportive of this. So when right. we have the organization and the leadership support, then what else do we need? We just need ourselves to kind of you know take this forward. So I'm glad right. that the context was set. And thank you. And I will you know take it onward. Just give me a minute. There's a lot of noise from my neighbors. I will just tell them to quieten down. <laughs> no problem. That's the fun nowadays, right? Especially working from home, right? Kids yeah. coming and there is a joke, right? Um, um, there's a joke. Uh, people used to, uh, I, I just uh, relate to myself, right? Uh, my mom or wife is asking how many cooker sound we were listening. I said two. On the other end, my boss from the US, no, 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 then it is three. I was, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is now. We are all learning something. Thank you so much. Right. Looking Thank forward you. to your support always. Thanks. 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 So Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Uh, just give me a second. I'll be. Okay, so I am back and uh, thank you and wish you all a very happy Women's Day. So what if uh, the 8th of March is gone? Every day is Women's Day. And uh, while I was talking to Uttara to understand whether this is probably the last of the programs, uh, especially for Women's Day in this week, um, and hence I have that much more responsibility to make it a, a, a fantastic ending for you for the week. But I have to tell you that I think it is going to be a start of something more beautiful for you all if you kind of choose to, you know, implement some of the things that you may learn during this interaction and we will keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, so I will bring on my screen and uh, I'm putting it on the speaker view as well as bringing in my screen, which is here. Is this visible to everyone? Just do a thumbs up if it is. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. All right. Request everyone to keep yourselves on mute and we will definitely allow yourselves to unmute when there is question and answer time. If there is something that you really want to stop me during the session, please put it on chat and I'll request Uttra or someone to stop me at that point in time if we have to take that question then and there. Otherwise, sure. definitely towards the end, we will have Q&A time. And, uh, and at the end, I would love for everyone to come on the video and we can take a picture like we would have done if we were in the office, right? So that will also be a great moment for me. So I've titled today's talk as work-life balance. And I thought that uh, because Uttara and the team and we were discussing what is it that we must speak about today. And we can speak about hundred things, but I think at the end of the day, if you are able to get some semblance of uh, a balance, I think a lot can be achieved and a lot can be accomplished. So my talk is titled Work-Life Balance, but we'll see where all we are able to go with this uh, discussion today. Now, what is balance? There is a typical definition of balance. And the minute you say balance, there is a visual that comes into minds, right? So a balance is supposed to be a situation in which different elements are equal or in correct proportion. So that is the def that is the kind of visual that comes to your mind because we are always trying to weigh, measure something and say that both the sides are in balance. And here we are talking about work and life. So the assumption is that is there a way for us to balance in equal proportions both the work aspect as well as the life aspect and whatever else that you believe life encompasses, okay? But I want to tell you, in the very beginning, there is no concept of a work-life balance. It is a myth. So I don't want you guys to stress out and worry. And the other thing I also want to tell you is that um, I have 25 years of experience in the IT industry. So I'm not alien to the kind of work that you're doing. Of course, it's 25 years ago. Um, I quit from the corporate IT world in 2017. So I may not be so very savvy with the current trends and the current kind of you know, environments, but there is definitely an understanding of what a woman in an IT industry does go through. Uh, I'm a mother to a 19 year old. So obviously during those 25 years, I've got pregnant, I've had a baby and I have raised this child to be extremely independent today. And she's doing her first year undergrad here yes. in Bangalore. And uh, I have also worked with a lot of women when I was handling the uh, jobs for her foundation and I've worked with students. So I have 
whatever I'm going to speak today is not academic research. It is my own experience, as well as experience of having watched others and uh, in terms of what has worked and what has not worked. And hence, I believe that some of this you can definitely implement in your own lives. Having said that, going back to balance, and I said that work-life balance is a myth. What you can try and achieve is called as work-life -like harmony or work-life integration. So something like the right side picture, trying to put all the pieces of the jigsaw together to create a holistic picture. Some might be larger jigsaw pieces, some might be smaller, but it is for you to figure out what will be larger, what will be smaller. But at the end of the day, when you bring everything together, it looks like a holistic life, a life that you desired for yourselves. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. And to be able to achieve this, there are a few things that I believe are very, very important. To start with, look at what our priorities in life are. And whenever I say anything, it is life. Don't talk about it from priorities at work, priorities at home, and priorities towards the nation. All of us have multiple things that we want to achieve. If I were to ask you all the things, you probably go to 100, 200, you know, list of items. But let's start with the top three to five, not more than three to five, right? Because the minute it goes beyond five, then whatever I tell you to do is going to be very, very difficult to achieve. Over a period of time, you could probably make the list 10 and 20. But to start with, can we start with three, maximum five? And I'm saying, set your priorities. And every time I tell this to people, they say, you, you think we don't know our priorities? Of course we know our priorities. But I ask you, tell me what is your priority number one? And then people will say, X and Y. And I say, no, 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 no. You can't have two things at priority number one. Or at any priority number, you can't have two or three things. Every priority in your life should have only one thing. So out of X and Y, which you believe are your priorities, what is priority one and what is priority two? And that becomes so much harder for us to decide. If you want to do anything, you have to be that clear about your priorities. And hence I say, how to figure out what is that one thing at priority one? And then what is that one thing at priority two? Ask yourselves this question. If you could only focus on one thing in life, what would it be? And when I say life, it looks too long. And then you say, oh, my God, is it only one thing? But I'm saying, what are the period at which you're setting the priorities? For example, if you're setting your priorities for the next six months or for one year, for that six months to one year, if you could do only one thing, I'm not allowing you to do a second thing at all you could do only one thing, then what is that one thing that you would focus on? That becomes your priority number one. And that needs a lot of deep reflection, right? And maybe a lot of conversation and you know discussion amongst everybody else to say, okay, fine, what is that one thing for the next six months? Of course, in the next six months, things could change. During the six months, things could change. But I'm saying at this point in time, looking at what you can visualize for yourselves for the next whatever immediate future that you're setting these priorities for, that one thing. And then after you have got that, ask yourselves, if I could sneak in a second thing now, what is that one second thing that I will put in? Using that question, you put your top three to five priorities. It is so, so very important for us to do this exercise. And I'll tell you why. For example, supposing you had five things, you know, you kind of thought of this and you came across with five things. One of them is that, of course, work is a priority, right? All of us are here because we have certain ambitions for ourselves and we aspire to reach some positions, uh, you know, uh, in the next six months, in the next one year, probably a new project, a promotion, whatever it be. So work is a priority. The second priority, and not in the number, but second in the list is that you want to ensure that your family is, you know, well taken care of from, from say, the nutrition aspect. So you want to really ensure that there is nutritious food available for the family every day. The third could be that you want to ensure that your house is very thick and span and clean. Because all of us are quite, I think as women, you know, quite uh, uh, clean freaks, I think. So we want to ensure that, you know, the house is perfect and you know, in order and absolutely no, no speck of dust. The fourth is for those of us who are married and have kids probably, 
uh, is that I need to have enough time to spend time with the kids. And maybe the fifth one is that I want to look at myself and become more healthy, you know, ensure that I have some fitness goals for myself. Supposing these are the five things in your list, and I'm not saying this is what it should be. It can be completely different. I've just randomly put out, pulled out something because this is what I usually hear when I say, okay, tell me what are the top things in, you know, bothering you or what you want to work on for this year. Now, supposing you kind of prioritize this by asking this question, what is that one thing that I will do if I had only one thing to do? And you put in healthy me as the top priority. Supposing that is what is the biggest botheration for you and that is the biggest thing that you want to kind of achieve. You put healthy me in proper priority one and then you put work at priority two. Then say maybe you put three as spending time with kids and four you say nutritious food for the family and the fifth is that let's have a clean house. What happens when you kind of schedule the day? Supposing every morning you have about half an hour available for yourself and then you know the work starts. How do you spend this half an hour? Are you going to go and do some exercise routine or are you going to sit and cook some great meal for the family? Or are you going to spend time with the kids or are you going to clean up the house? Work to anyway is going, has to happen. It will start at nine or 10 or whatever. But you somehow manage to get this half an hour in the morning every day. How will you decide what you want to do with that half an hour? This is where the prioritization comes into picture. The minute I look at my list, I say, okay, healthy me is my top priority. So let me use this half an hour in the morning to do some kind of a fitness routine, routine for myself. And the half an hour is consumed and then you get into work and the whole day is over. Now there were three other goals, right? You had, you wanted to, you know, ensure that there is nutritious food for the family, the house is kept clean, you want to spend time with your kids and in the evening you probably have one hour available for you where you can focus on any of these or all of this. Again, you go back to your priority list. What is the next thing that you wanted to achieve? The next thing you wanted to do was I wanted to spend time with my kids. So let me, you know, kind of allocate half an hour in the evening to either sit down with them, watch TV with them, play with them, take them to the park, do their homework or whatever else. And the other half an hour, you say the next thing is nutritious food. So let me go and cook something. What has happened? The cleaning the house, which was also in your list of priorities, didn't get accomplished on that day because you didn't have time. But it is okay because it was the last of the priorities, at least you were able to achieve the top four and you feel good about it. Now the next day, again, morning half an hour, you've decided I'm going to spend it on myself because that is priority number one. Evening, again, the evening continues in the same manner. Every day you're able to get only one hour. You're not get, going to get more than that. What happens to this cleaning the house? Maybe it is, you know, it's not the regular cleaning because most of us do have maids and, you know, who come in and, you know, sweep and swab and all of that. Maybe it's specialized cleaning. Maybe you want to do some deep cleaning. You want to kind of, you know, uh, pick up something and, you know, dust it and all of that, which you want to do once a week or whatever, or it could be a daily effort also. This kind of prioritization and then scheduling, what it helps you is with a decision to say, should I delegate this? Because I'm not able to achieve this with the amount of time that I have. And I would rather use my time towards my big ticket items because towards the top priorities that I have for the next whatever number of days and years. So let me then, when I, for the items that I don't have time, I can either ask for help from the family members or I can delegate it to somebody from outside. So that decision making to say, should I actually bring in a tuition teacher for the kids and get myself half an hour time? Or should I bring in a cook and get myself half an hour time? Or should I bring in a maid to you know, clean up the house and get half an hour time? Or should I sacrifice my fitness and then sit and clean the house and cook in the house and spend time with the kids? But every day I keep thinking, oh my God, my biggest priority or I really wanted to become healthy and I know wanted to get into a fitness routine is not being achieved. And that is why I believe that there's nothing called work-life balance in this world. And uh, somebody who works in the IT world can never achieve that. So either I quit the job or I take in a role which will give me more time. Or I will continue because, you know, work is so much of a priority. I'll ignore my health. That's what usually happens to us, right? But look at how well you're able to streamline your thought process and take the right decisions based on those priorities. The minute you are very clear about your priorities. And I'm not saying everyone has to have it in the same order. And I'm not saying that you have to have it in the same order forever. 
For example, when my daughter was much younger, I knew in the evenings I would come and spend time with her, sit down. I didn't have to look at homework and all of that. She was pretty much independent, but I would definitely, you know, see what else is happening in, in the school and, you know, all the other additional stuff that she's doing. I would sit down and try and help her out. But I know that a few years later, I decided that I need to make her very independent and she should not always be coming. And then, you know, that aspect of spending time with my child towards homework and schoolwork changed. Of course, I still continue to spend time with her, but it, it'll be probably on a different aspect. Things will continue to change. But at the current situation, in the current circumstances, what are your priorities? Something that you must and spend the most time on this. Because this is the starting point of all the trouble and this is the starting point of all the solutions also. And the only other aspect that I will add is that today we have some semblance of normalcy, I may say, despite the pandemic. I know that last year in the months of, you know, if I had addressed the same crowd last year in April and May, you, you wouldn't probably be able to set priority for the next one month or so because life was, you know, changing on a daily basis and you really didn't know where you were going. And even uh -huh. today, you know, God forbidden, if we have personally some challenges which kind of, you know, take us into different directions almost on a daily basis or a weekly basis, I would advise you to look at your priority list every day. Doesn't matter. So for me, at that point in time last year, because I didn't, I always had a cook and a, you know, maid forever. I've always had support in the house. But last year, you know, both of them didn't come. And I'm sure that's how it was for many of us. So I knew that I had to sweep and I knew I had to mop and I had to clean and cook and all of that. So between me and my daughter, we decided that, uh, so there are six big rooms in the house. And I said, okay, three rooms one day, three rooms the other day. That's how we decided it to be. And then Sunday, we would take a break from, you know, those cleaning chores. But then on a daily basis, if something else came up, because I was also continuing to work and if there would be other exigencies that would come up, if there was a day when morning I wasn't able to clean, I was okay with it. Because you have to change your priorities on a daily basis. It's okay, tomorrow we will do. Now, of course, if the tomorrow becomes three continuous days when you've not been able to clean, then you have to think about it. So ideally, in an ideal situation, you will be able to prioritize for a longish duration. But sometimes when things are really out of control for your life and in your current situation, do it on a daily basis. What is my priority for today? And be happy with that. Take those decisions and let's move on to the next. Okay. With this prioritization actually comes planning and weeks. What do I mean by planning your days and weeks? And why should we actually plan days and weeks? We all understand the planning for a day because I think more or less we do it. You know, based on what is the menu and what is the evening looking like? Do I have to go somewhere? Do I have to attend something and work and all of that? But I really urge you to actually plan for the entire week. And what should go into the planning for the entire week? All your priorities. Everything, not just work. All of us have a calendar, right? It could be an Outlook calendar or whatever calendar you manage. I use a Google calendar. Ensure that every aspect of what you have put in your priority list goes into that one calendar because we are talking about a harmonious life. We are talking about an integrated life. So if you are going to make it different calendars, it is never going to integrate. Again, you're trying to balance and it's not going to work. Have one calendar into which you put everything. So for me, because I actually currently, you know, freelance and I consult with three different organizations, I give these kinds of talks and, you know, I do so many things. I write, I, I volunteer and all of that. There are always clashing priorities, different clients, different deadlines. I ensure that every small thing goes into my calendar, including a dentist appointment that I have for my daughter. And she laughs her head off, you know. So whenever I go to a dent the dentist and she's having some orthodontic treatment going on, the dentist will say, okay, next two weeks ke baad. She will come and ask me, okay, ma, next two weeks ke baad. And I will look at my calendar and I will put it into my calendar so that because I'm currently, you know, in a situation that I take calls any time of the day, any time of the week, which is not a great thing. But yeah, today I'm able to do that. I can probably afford to do that when I say that because the family is kind of, you know, settled and stable now. Um, and I don't want to miss that appointment or then last minute say, okay, you know, somebody take my daughter to the dentist. Neither do I want to kind of, you know, get stressed that, oh my God, this call has to be done and how do I manage the dentist appointment? So I just pull off two hours from my calendar on those Mondays when I have to go to the dentist to say, not available, five to six or whatever is the appointment, half an hour before that, half an hour after that, if not available. So ensure that you have a integrated calendar. 
which will have, and I really want to quote Pavitra Singh here. The reason I'm bringing up names of people who have said similar things is because these are women who achieved what they have achieved. And it's not only my experience, I've looked at people, I've heard from them. And here she says, don't view work and life as separate. View them both as priorities. And hence in your priority list you should have aspects of everything. And she says she adds appointments, both personal and professional to her calendar. And based on importance or urgency, she tends to each. And she is Pavitra Singh, who's now the CHR of PepsiCo India. And she's a mother to an early teenage daughter. The only reason I put that there is that, hey, she's also got a you know, home life. She's a parent and she is doing you know, such things at work. And the most important thing is plan for the week. The minute you plan for the week, which means that you can try and put all your four or five priority items schedule it for the week, put, you know, your lunch breaks in there, because that is also important, especially when you're working from home, those, you know, uh, boundaries are very, very kind of thin and almost, you know, disappeared. So tell your office mates that this is my lunch time, or this is my me time. This is the time when I go for a walk, I will not take calls there. And tell your home, your people around you, because you're at home, people will think that, okay, they can barge in whenever. Tell them that, no, these are my work hours and during this, I will not. Or maybe you have to tell them about your me time also. To say that, no, I would like to you know, spend these 15 minutes quietly with myself and I don't want any disturbances. Not that I'm not going to tend to you at home or not that I'm going, not going to take the calls at work, but not within this time because it is important for me to kind of have this for myself or I'm going to spend this one hour with my child. And the most important aspect is you respect your calendar. Because unless and until you respect of your calendar and decline, you know, something which can wait, which can go into another slot of your calendar, nobody else is going to respect your calendar. So you have to respect it, which means that any amount of uh, calls that you're getting when you're supposed to be sitting with your child and spending time, you will not take those calls. So people can always text you and say, or you can respond by text and saying that, is it urgent? And if it is not urgent, take the call later. And, you know, this is how I would say, you know, you must... In the days when we used to go to the office, commute was, you know, one big thing, especially for people in Bangalore. Commute that kind of takes up two, three hours. I said, plan what you can do in the commute time also. So, for example, if you're saying that I'm not able to read and you, you want to use the commute time, and I know reading is not possible, you know, if you're driving, but there are audio books available today. So make the, it might be the, not be the most ideal, but what is a secondary option available? So you can, you know, plug in something to your ears, at least audio books or whatever else you want to listen to. And that, that commute time is also used to kind of, in, in a very fruitful, gainful manner. The other thing is the minute you start doing this, right, um, you will realize the amount of time you're spending on stuff which, which you, you can ideally spend on something better. Um, it is like uh, when, when the, if, you, if you ever you've gone to a dietitian, she'll say, why don't you write down a diary in which you write uh, every small thing that you're eating on a daily basis. Everything, the minute you're popping in a biscuit, write that. A chocolate, write that. Uh, and at the end of the week or a month, you realize, oh my God, I've been, you know, hogging biscuits and chocolates or something else, you know, like crazy, even without knowing about it. Like that, when you start putting every small thing into this, right? Okay, I spend half an hour on WhatsApp. I spend half an hour on Instagram, Facebook, whatever be, you know, of your choice. I do these four words uh, or everything goes into it. You realize I actually will manage to get three hours in a week if I don't do this. This is not really that much of a priority. Maybe, you know, I can just push this, you know, as, you know, half an hour activity toward in the end of the week. I can get two and a half hours out of it to put it to use, you know, somewhere else. So very important for us to start putting everything into the calendar and then seeing are your top priority items first fitting in and then you're bringing in other aspects. And also keep some kind of a buffer. Don't crowd your calendar completely because there will be emergencies, there will be exigencies. So when you keep half an hour or some buffer on a daily basis, if something comes up, which you have to do that day, without actually pushing out something, saying, okay, let the food fit. Can people go on mute, please? Uh, without fitting something and you know, throwing something out of the window, which usually is yourself, right? Ah. Stuff that you've decided for yourself reading a book or exercising or something like that, you will be able to still put it into that buffer time. If not, you can actually pull out something from today, which you believe is not necessarily needed to deliver today and push it to the next day because your calendar for the week has been set up. 
so very important for you to also schedule some of the planning activities. For example, for me, because I do so many of these, there is someone who's continuously talking, who's not on mute and it is disturbing me. Can people go on mute, please? Uh, Uttara, is it possible for you to see who's that person and mute that person? Uh, sure, sure, Neeraja, I'll do that. Thank you, thank you for that. It's just that it's kind of, you know, disturbing. So I was saying prep work. So I give these kinds of talks, right? I just can't come here at 11 o'clock and start talking. I have to do some kind of preparation. In fact, I have done at least a dozen times I've spoken on work-life uh, balance and work-life integration. So you might think that, okay, she just has to walk in and give a talk. No, I don't. Even if I know this deck inside out, the examples inside out, I will spend one hour preparing for it. I will do a rehearsal before this particular session. And, you know, some kind of research to say, who, which is my audience, target audience? Am I relating to that? Are my examples related to that? Which means I will need one hour of prep time. So while Uttara will calendarize this and, you know, it will come and sit on my Friday, 11 o'clock, I will go and put one hour of prep time, you know, at least two days before. So I know that I can't crowd my Wednesday because I need to prepare for this session. You have to, you also have, you know, these kinds of preparations to do. Maybe you're going into a senior stakeholder meeting or, you know, whatever else you have to do and you need some kind of preparation is so very important. You can't just walk into meetings. And that is why you're probably not adequately able to, you know, people say, you know, oh, as a woman, I'm the only woman at the table. I'm not able to do that if you prepare and go half of your problems are solved. So put that also into your calendar so that it doesn't become a last minute rush and hence again you have to you know give away something to do that preparation. So your calendar is something that you will live with and it has to be integrated and as Pavitra says put everything into that one calendar. One of the most important things that you need to have in your calendar for yourselves is me time right? you have to prioritize me time. In that example, I said it could be fitness. It could be whatever it is. It could be reading a book. It could be, you know, playing a game. It could be just being with yourselves. It is so important to, you know, have me time. And I'll tell you another story from my own life. When sometime when I was in the 30s, in one year, I actually put 10 kilos of weight. Okay. And nothing had changed. I was eating the same kind of food. It was the same kind of schedule at work, at home and all of that. But in that one year, gradually, my weight increased by 10 kilos. So I thought, okay, fine. I probably need to get into some kind of an exercise uh, regime and routine. And there was no time available to you know, go to a gym or you know, take a walk outside. So I said, let me buy a treadmill and keep it in the house so that I can walk on it anytime, right? Like you can squeeze in some time. So I've got a treadmill at home and got walking on that. After two months, I realized that I put on another two kilos. So now it was very depressing and disappointing. So I went to a doctor and she started talking to me about, you know, many things. Uh, what are you doing? Yevo? That is when the, fitness, the diet chart also came in. She said, write whatever you're eating and stuff like that. And we were trying to work on this, but nothing was working. Finally, she asked me, can you tell me what your schedule for the day is? And I said, see, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. I usually get up at five in the morning, but because of this treadmill that I have to fit into my schedule, I'm getting up half an hour earlier, 4.30. Otherwise, five, and then the day continues. Right? I have, my child was much younger, so there is, you know, tending to the child, to the family, live in a joint family, and then, you know, I have work and then stuff. Everything, 11, 11.30, whatever time I finish and go to sleep. And she said, that is the problem. She said, your body knows on a daily basis because of a routine that you have, how much of calories you will be expending on a daily basis. And hence, it kind of prepares itself towards that, that, towards that outflow of calories. Now, it knows that it needs to prepare for another half an hour because you're getting up and you're actually trying to walk on the treadmill and it is still rigorous and you need a lot more of you know, calories. So because it realizes it needs another half an hour worth of you know, energy, it is trying to conserve. And that is why putting on weight rather than shedding weight. And she said, just forget everything. Forget your exercise, forget your weight, forget everything. Ensure in this one day, every day, you have at least half an hour available to you where you don't do anything, she said. Now, can you imagine and a person like me, and I'm sure many of us will relate to this, that I can't sit still not doing anything. It's like a criminal waste of time. For fine five minutes, I will clean something, I will put something, I will fold clothes, I'll go do something. 
and she's telling me half an hour don't do anything so i said how do i spend that half an hour so i finally picked up a tv serial and i said i'll sit in front of the tv at least you know i can't sit i will at least watch something and that is how my journey of me time started and now i do not you know let anything come in the way of that me time because i do many many things you know beyond that today but i'm talking about the days when i still had a corporate job and it was kind of you know one job and child was younger so family also needed more attention from me i ensured that half an hour even today i have a serial for one hour every day non negotiable over the weekend i ensure because the kind of work that i do it's freelance right so you will have meetings and work that you can continue to do over the weekend also and i like doing all of this work but i have told myself there will be a movie that i will catch over the weekend so it has to look different my weekend has to look different from a weekday and i will push myself i'll pick something on amazon prime or something on tv and i will do that so the me time is so very important and here is lavanya nali who's a vice chairman of nali so i'm sure all of us from the south know nali she says and she's a mother of a 3 year old and she says we have a finite reserve of energy focus on things that are energy replenishing rather than depleting right so it's important to take time out for yourself whether that's socializing playing tennis reading a book anything that you enjoy because that is what is going to bring your energy levels up so you will look forward to that you know that activity during the day and after that you will be re-energized to do the rest of the stuff for the day whatever 15 minutes 10 minutes 1 hour it doesn't matter but that is a me time which you should be having your priority list which should go into your calendar non negotiable and you will tell people this is time for myself no disturbance a must because if you are looking at work life harmony this is important and then be guilt free how many of us will say okay now i did that i'm telling no to so many people because i am trying to spend time for myself at the cost of whatever you are guilt free so you are guilt guilt is something that is given to us as a gift i think the minute the girl child is born people the family and friends will give you the gift of guilt people will continue to say things look at her she is not doing this she is doing this and so on and uh, this is you know one person that i admire apurva purohit she is the president of jagran group and she has written two books you must read it one is called lady uh, you are not a man and the other one is lady you are the boss of course she is a mother to a i think 26 year old boy old son she says you can't and you don't need to be perfect in everything you do be outstanding in certain specific areas which again aligns with your priorities instead of being mediocre on everything so don't start looking at you know if you are part of a joint family you are part of a family where there are two other daughters in law and they do exceptional cooking and exceptional cleaning and 100 other things you want to be called as the best sorry it's not what is your priority if your priority was i want to be called as the best daughter in law then go ahead and do that but if your priority is that you want to you know grow in the organization and reach you know whatever helm that you know you have decided for yourself then you don't decide there are only two things that i'm going to do the rest the people can keep talking because that is not on my priority list let go of certain things and do not regret and when i was much younger um you know i used to i had an opportunity to i moderate a panel discussion much younger days my child was much younger and these were all very senior women leaders who were there on the panel and i asked them do you ever feel guilty for example if your child did not score the kind of marks uh, you know and this typical mother right uh, typical mother who will say oh my daughter should score all of this if my child did not score the kind of marks that i wanted the child to don't you ever feel guilty if you had spent more time with the child maybe the child would have scored more marks and she told me what is the guarantee nirja that if i had spent time with her she would have scored more maybe she would have scored lesser if i was so we just assume that without us nothing will work and we are the only ones who can do things perfectly right and i will tell you the same so my daughter you know i have told you i have brought her up very uh, no 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 <laughs> i mean uh, not audible was i audible till now even to hear you early uh no the last part uh, you know let go and uh, okay. think you are not able to i mean you told Okay. but we could not understand it at all i will i will bring it. it up again okay yeah. so i was saying that 
guilt is something that we all live with. We've been given the gift of guilt. But I'm saying, why is that guilt coming? Because the rest of the world is telling you something, right? The rest of the world doesn't know what your priorities are. Only you know what your priorities are. So why don't you just fix your mind to achieve the things which are in your priority list and forget the rest? As Apurva says, that you don't need to be perfect in everything. Just be outstanding in those items which are part of your priority list instead of being mediocre in everything. And I was giving the example of me having asked a senior woman leader when I was in much younger to say that if your daughter did not get the kind of marks that you were expecting her to get in the tests, school tests, won't you feel guilty that, you know, if you had spent more time with her, maybe you should have scored more marks. And the lady said, what is the guarantee? Maybe should have scored less marks if I had been, you know, around her. And hence, we think that we are the only ones who can do things. Nobody else around us can do it as well as we can. Even if they are not able to do as well as we can, but they are able to do it to some extent, why don't we let go? Because our priority is something else. We can spend that time on something else. And to the same example of the marks, I want to tell you, tell you that, of course, I made my daughter extremely independent from a very young age. I used to sit with her for studies and all till she was probably in the fifth standard. And after that, you know, she was kind of on her own. By the time I came to the 10th standard, you know, uh, people will ask you the question, oh, she's in 10th, are you taking a break from, you know, work this year? Or, you know, are you taking a few months off? Or, you know, during the exams, are you going to be with her and all of that? Uh, and I asked her, uh, because I didn't know what I would do by taking a break, because she's so very independent, she does it all by herself, me sitting at home is not going to help or harm in any way. And she said, okay, maybe ma, you'll be around on the days I have exam. But 23rd March, I still remember is when her exams were to start. And on 22nd March, I got purpose, you know, and the doctor said, um, it is infectious, don't be around her. So what do you do? Uh, of course, my mother lives in the same city in Bangalore. So I packed my bags. I told my daughter, I don't want to be around you. I will not be in the house also. Forget taking a break or you know, coming back in the evenings. I won't be in the house for the next three weeks that you have your exams because I don't want you to catch this infection. Her purpose is like a chickenpox variant. And I was not there for the three weeks of her 10 standard board exams. She did it exceptionally well. She actually topped the school and she says, oh, maybe because you were not there, I did it so well. So let go people, right? It is important for you to ensure that you are making everybody else responsible and you focus on what your those priorities are. And of course, in those priorities, you will have family, you will have other things. But to what extent? And to what extent based on what your top priority is towards work? And finally, I say, please seek support. You are not a superwoman and you don't need to be a superwoman. I'm sure all of us had have heard enough and more stories of Indra Nui about how she's raised her girls. And she says, every day you have to make a decision about whether you're going to be a wife or a mother. In fact, on the same day, you will have to make that decision many, many times. And you have to co-opt a lot of people into helping you. Her own story of you know, her daughter coming back from school and then making a call to her secretary in the evenings every day and the secretary would ask the child a few questions to say did you do your homework did you do this did you do this and based on those answers the secretary would either give permission to the girl to go and play or not to play and then later she would go and tell Indra Noe okay fine your daughter called she said yes to all the 10 questions I have allowed her to play or she said five or yeses and I said no you have to go and finish the others or she said eight yeses I said it's okay today you can still go and play so Indra Noe used to co-opt and get people to help her, be it the school, be it the you know, secretary, be it whoever. And it is important for you to ensure that you reach out for support within the organization, at home, and amongst friends and family without feeling guilty because you're not the only one who's going to get that you know, kind of stuff. Um, and when you take that kind of support, ensure you return it also. Uh, so you kind of take uh, help from a friend, ensure that you're trying to help that uh, friend when that friend is in need. Same applies for the work that you do in the office also. You might be running three different you know, projects. You might be you know, uh, having three different initiatives going because you really want to make yourselves visible in the organization and get the next promotion. You don't have to do everything on all the three projects. 
Two of them are very, very critical and you feel, you know, you need to drive them. The third one, delegate it to someone. You are around to give that support, but you're also there to get some visibility out of it and to get the desired outcome. But get someone else to help you, you know, do most of the things on that one. That's the way you're going to enable others to grow at the same time, make some, you know, time available for yourself. And finally, this is a continuous activity. You will say today, I don't have time for anything. You're telling me sit down, reflect, priorities, schedule, etc. But to start with, you will need to invest time in this. But I will promise you, it will become a part of your life. And this is not something that I'm only telling women who are working. I've told these two students also. My own daughter who's 19 and she's in the first year of college and she also works. And many of the other girls that I mentor, this is one thing they've come and said, time management, I don't know. And I've told you, keep one Google calendar and put every small thing into it. And then you see how fantastically it works. And all of them have come back to me and said that, now I feel I'm not letting go of anything. And I realize what are those things which are not important for me and I have pushed it aside and whatever is most important to me and kind of gives me the most amount of satisfaction and whatever else I want to achieve is what you know I am able to concentrate on. So like Sheena Mohri, who's the vice president at Dell Digital and of course the mother to the 20 year old son says, at different junctures in life, you will need to make choices based on your current priorities. Priorities will keep changing. The choice will be the right thing to do that will drive the happiness for yourself and the ecosystem. So of course, sometimes you may take career as president, sometimes you may take family as president, but it is you who decide that. You decide what is important for you at what stage of your life and then make that a priority and you'll live your life as per that. And with that, I would like to take any questions. I know that, you know, I have, it's at 11.54, but I did have to cover, you know, all of this. I hope some of your questions are already answered with this, but happy to, you know, answer any more questions that you may have. Uh, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Neeraja. I think uh, Reena has a couple of questions uh, that were spent down by folks. So, Yes, yes. Uh, hi, Neeraja. So there are a few questions, uh, uh, you know, in... Uh, yeah, am I audible? I can hear you. <laughs> yes. So what are the best examples of positive change in the workplace that you have noticed uh, in the past years? Is this uh, driven by self or is it uh, driven by... Am I still there? Okay, sorry, I, I thought I lost. Sorry, I was going to ask, is this driven by self or driven by the organization? By the organization. Uh, okay. the organization won't work. I mean, uh, Rina, was it um, for the organization or self? I think it was self. Okay, anyway, go ahead. So, you know, see, organizations can keep, you know, making changes. And uh, what I heard, you know, uh, when your leader came and spoke, was fantastic. I mean, in terms of the amount of support uh, that they are giving. Half the problem is that, you know, we ourselves, you know, are not willing to kind of make a change. Uh, so some of the things that I mentioned to you today are the things that you need to reflect upon to say, hey, you know, am I, am, am I in that kind of a stage? Am I really, you know, doing uh, what is most important for me or not? So the will to bring about a change. And this is why I always say that whenever you learn something new, Whenever you do training programs, there are two aspects. There is a will aspect and there's a skill aspect. Skills are much, much easily learnable, especially in today's world, because at the drop of a pin, you have a webinar happening, you have a YouTube video and you have Udemy courses and whatever else, it's much easier. But do you have an internal will to make those changes happen? And why is it that the will, you know, you're not able to kind of bring about, even after all of this, you will say, oh, if I do something, you know, what will my husband say? What will my friend say? What will the rest of the world say? And that is why the change doesn't happen. So I really urge all of you to not really look at what the rest of the world is doing, not what your friend is doing, not what somebody else has achieved. Maybe you don't even, for this, this one year, maybe you really cannot, you know, put yourselves on the fast track of your career, which is perfectly fine, right? There will come, the next year will come when you will be able to go all out and, you know, achieve that. 
So decide your priorities. The minute you have decided your own priorities and you don't care for the, and when I say don't care, not in a negative manner, but don't care for what the rest of the world is saying. Don't compare yourselves with everybody else, but you are your own comparator, right? What did I do last year? What do I want to do this year? And am I achieving those goals? The change will happen towards what you want to achieve. Thanks, Neeraja. The next, next to be, uh, from your perspective, what women-related myth needs to be broken in the society? Well, there are enough, right? There are so many stereotypes. Um, one of them is that, yeah, women cannot stay long hours, they will not travel, and, you know, all of that. And I will tell you, this myth was broken for me myself, uh, because when I was in Capgemini, and I was in a role which used to you know, make me travel uh, to Pune every month uh, because you know, the organization, that team was spread across Pune, Chennai, Bangalore, and Pune was the power center and the largest number of teams there. I used to do this travel every week to Pune. And um, this was an account that was existing for 15 years. And I was you know, in the extended management team. So you know, the business unit head and then a layer, I was in the next layer. So in that, the top three layers, there were 25 leaders. I was the only woman leader. And in the last 15 years of that account being in existence, I, the first time a woman leader was brought in. And I used to do all of this travel. And then at one point in time, it became very difficult for me. Also because a lot of things were not happening you know, in the right way for me in my personal life. My mother had to undergo a surgery and then my husband fell ill, father-in-law fell ill, a lot of things happened. So I actually stepped out of that project by saying that I cannot travel. But I felt so, so, so very guilty uh, that the, 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 the myth of a woman can't travel, will not travel. And the first time they have put a woman leader and then she's kind of failed. So I not even felt guilty for myself, but for all the other, you know, women, maybe this particular account will not hire another woman for the next 15 years. And then after some time, I quit from the organization also. One of my peers, a male peer, he called me after a few months and he, he said, Nirja, I'm leaving the company. I said, okay, where are you joining? And he said, I haven't decided yet, but I know for sure that the next company that I join, I will not pick a project, which is a US based client, because I don't want to do those kind of US signing calls, will not have the kind of travel that I was, because he was also traveling the way I was traveling, and will give me time to spend time with my newborn. So the myth that it's only a woman who wants to do all of this, even a man wants to do all of this, but can we start talking about it? Can the men start talking about it? And can organizations make policies which are more uh, you know, uh, gender neutral? So instead of saying maternity leave, can we talk about parental leave? So that while there is still a block that only a mother should you know, kind of care for the child, if there is a parental leave given, maybe either of them can take that leave. And hence those questions of if I hire a woman, she will go on leave and she will need flexibility does not arrive. So these are some of the myths and stereotypes, but things are changing. And I would really urge for, you know, all the um, men folk in the organization to also kind of say, we need this. Why should it only be the woman who needs this and, you know, bring about those changes? Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for that. And next would be, uh, what will be a suggestion to bring down stress level while working from home? So I think I already told, right? I think, you know, there was quite a few in that. So the bit about the me time, the bit about the calendar, the bit about, you know, telling the whole world that I am not available at this time and not taking on every responsibility on yourselves, you know, co-ops, co-opt your family to kind of help you, you know, with certain things, let go of certain things because it is not necessary for you to have a stick and span house every day, a speck of dust on that TV is not going to kill you. But if instead of that 30 minutes of trying to keep the house clean, you can spend those 30 minutes on yourself or something else, which is higher priority, you will actually become stress-free. So it is so very important that sometimes if you, you don't have any passion for yourselves personally, you don't have a hobby or something, it is also a good idea to pick up something in the organization to say, let me drive some initiative. So it gives you some respite from the monotony of the day job that you have that you know you go to that particular you know initiative for half an hour and then come back to that that itself is you know a stress buster so these are all the aspects that i think i touched upon which can help you know relieve some stress yeah thank you thanks a lot neeraja so i'll leave the floor for others to ask their questions sure, sure. anyone i'll be happy to you know, take any questions hi neeraja this is shivani um 
I had a question. Uh, I'm not sure if this was answered uh, in you know the uh, the different notes that you have shared with us. Uh, really insightful. But most of the time, I kind of find myself. Uh, most of the time, actually, the whole day, I kind of, I kind of find myself preoccupied. Uh, you know, in my head, it, it's just in my head. Uh, my brain is almost all the time uh, working. Uh, and and because of that, even when I have had my share of sleep for eight hours or nine hours a day, uh, when I get up in the morning, I don't feel fresh. My eyes don't feel relaxed. Uh, my body feels like uh, it's very tired. Uh, and all of this could be a part of, uh, you know, the stress and not focusing on oneself uh, and putting ourselves into doing exercise or any kind of such activity. But uh, how do we how do we at least start to uh, you know, start to suppress some of this that, you know, keeps running in the mind uh, that we have to con continuously. I keep thinking that, OK, I have to do this work. I have to do this work. And this has happened only after my marriage, because there are so many other things after marriage that you have to do at home. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm clueless and I don't know what my next step should be here. Thanks for that question, Shivani. Did you hear out in the beginning of the session where I said, can you prioritize and can you put it into your calendar, the set of activities that you wish to do? Uh, because that is the easy way out from this. I say easy way out because in the beginning it is tough, but you know, the minute you make it a practice, it becomes very, very easy. So it's the same just because you've gotten married, you know, and I know that the, the, the responsibilities have increased, but again, it is needed for you to understand how much should you do and only you do. Uh, and is it something that you are expecting yourself to do or somebody else is expecting you to do? Or is it that you are trying to match up to somebody's expectation and hence doing all of that? So you have to reflect. Like, for example, I don't cook. I celebrated my 25th wedding anniversary last year. So 25 years, I have not cooked. Of course, 2020, I did because there was a need. But I've always had support. In the initial years, my mother-in-law was to run the kitchen. She was happy doing it. And you know, I was happy letting it, letting it go. Last few years, I have had a cook. So I ensured that the menu is fixed and you know, whatever is the nutrition required and you know, there is a variety and all of that. But I don't. And everybody kind of gives me the grief and the guilt that, oh, look at this lady. She doesn't cook for the family. But what is the big deal? Yeah? At the end of the day, nobody is going starving. People are getting what they have to get in terms of nutrition, in terms of variety, in terms of having a full stomach. So I manage that. But I get myself out those two hours where I would have sent, uh, you know, spent. Now, of course, if cooking is a hobby and a passion for you, go ahead and do it. But I'm telling cooking as an example because, one, I don't do it. And I ran the same session at another organization. And I actually asked people, if you could let go of one thing at home, what would that be? Majority of them said cooking. So I'm taking the example of a cookie. <laughs> Right. And I'm saying, why is it that you have to cook uh, if you don't want to? And if you can get those two hours and cooking is an example, pick anything that you feel this is not the best use of your time. And if you had that time, you could put it elsewhere. Ask yourself the question. Are you doing it because you feel nobody else can do? Then that's a myth. Are you doing it because the rest of the world expects you to do? Then have the conversation with them to say that, hey, I will get it done. But it's not me. even your company. You do that, right? You don't do everything yourself. Certain things you get it done by delegating, by asking for support and things like that. And the minute you answer that question for yourself that I will do only so much and then put it into your calendar to say, okay, this is how my day will be, my week will be, your head will not keep processing. Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I do it? Because it's already crystal clear in your calendar. It is showing you that this is what you will do for the day. And this is only how much you will do for the day. Of course, you have a buffer to take on something more but beyond that, you will say a no or beyond that, you will push it to the other day next day because you have the plan for the week and you know where you can fit it in. So it's very important for you to figure out what your priorities are. Have those conversations with everyone. Let go of the guilt. There are only four or five things. I will repeat the same mantra. Prioritize, schedule, ensure you have me time, ensure you, you know, uh, do not feel guilty. Let go of certain things and seek support. Only mantra for anything in life. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe I'll have to learn all the five because uh, fortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, when I was alone in Bachelor, I used to almost do all of this on my own. Now that there are so many people around, I'm overwhelmed. And I, I find it difficult to delegate it because I've done it on my own. So it's, it's in my nerves to do it on my own. And Absolutely. the guilt factor... 
and the guilt factor comes back when i don't do it on my own because hey you did it now you're not doing it are you lazy and then you know all those questions kind of creep up so that's what is kind of haunting me uh, at the moment and uh, i think the same five pointers have been told by my husband also uh, <laughs> he supports me a lot so uh, i think that's that's where uh, i i almost know the answers but then uh it's like i'll have to keep repeating those answers till i get used to it and make it a practice yeah so, so you, you you should really you know be happy that you have a supportive husband so even in my early marriage days you know when i was used to stress about what should be cooked and i wanted to cook it in this particular manner and i want this also in the menu and my mother in law used to you know kind of offer to do whatever in the kitchen and of course it would be very different right because they they are a generation different the thought process is different my husband is at the same thing why don't you let go she is you know happily you know willing to you know manage the kitchen you take that time and do something else and i let go then and there and never have gone back to it <laughs> so yeah very very important uh, that you uh, you know ensure that uh, you you let go is the most difficult asana i have written an article on that it is only inside <laughs> us we think we are the only one who can brush our child's teeth best we are the yeah. only one who can tie the you know child's uh, shoelace best it's yeah. okay yeah they will learn whoever you're delegating it will learn otherwise you know it's okay no if it's not right. to the level of perfection that you do it's still okay it is getting done be happy <laughs> right right thank you so much neeraja for those pointers thanks a lot best of luck thank you thanks neeraja i just want to say that this guilt free uh, pointer was the most important point neeraja because most of the women you know when they are working they always feel that guilty that they are not giving time to family or kids so i'll keep that in my mind surely you must you must so uh, because i'll i'll tell you <laughs> and in another instance so of course i quit in 2017 i told you after having this corporate life a busy uh, corporate life so my my daughter of course was used to not seeing me when she comes back from the school right of course i lived in a joint family so my in laws were there and um but uh, the kind of um, uh, nosiness that a mother will have versus a grandmother will have is going to be different right so she was kind of very happy with that coming back uh, uh, to the house from the school and not having mother around and you know getting the food and then kind of managing herself and when i quit in 2017 um and i didn't have a uh, i had i didn't have a job i quit because of all the things that were going on and i didn't want to go back to corporate so i needed to take some time to think of what i was going to do so i told my daughter so from uh, whatever day i have quit um you will see me around in the house i'm, I'm going to be at home because i've quit and the first thing she said was ensure that you're not at home between 4 and 6 because she didn't want me around because she's not used to having me around <laughs> so you, what is that guilt factor that you have oh i should do this for my daughter and the daughter will come and tell you later well i didn't ask you to do it you chose it for yourself don't come and tell me all of that right and everyone else will tell you i didn't ask you to do it you chose it for yourself so choose very wisely choose very very wisely <laughs> yeah then I mean, this is again a great point neerja <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you do we have any other questions and very of the time i mean i am available uh, but you know if you are available we can continue <laughs> any questions team if not can we all come on video for a, i mean or for a minute i would definitely like to take one screenshot <laughs> those of you who can <laughs> sure sure uh, anira so that we saw uh, such vibrant minute, yeah. faces and vibrant colors you know it's on all women's forum <laughs> team just a minute yeah just come on video yeah whoever can would love to thank you so much please <laughs> i think everyone are very shy of what uh, they are coming in here <laughs> just for a minute yeah yeah i got a few few screenshots there's still people coming thank you i think uh, i think we still can come on uh, team <laughs> <laughs> it's just for a minute 
I know everyone has a oily hair and everything. It's okay. <laughs> Who you are? I know we all are working from home. We are all <laughs> in fact of uh, cooking and everything. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, Niranja. Fantastic! I have a full screen of you know faces, and I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Yeah. Any other last questions, observations, reflections? Any other questions, team? If at all it's uh, it's not a problem, probably you can ping us later. We'll definitely you know write it to Neeraja again, and we can. Uh, I'm available on LinkedIn for those who want to connect, and you know I'm a mentor on the jobs for her portal and aspire for her. You can reach out through that also. Sure, sure, Neeraja. Thank you so much for your time, uh, and I think it was very. For us, I mean, everyone has that guilt factor. I think uh, you addressed it really well. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, and uh, wish you all the very best. And, I, and this is not the end of the Women's Week. I think you must start now with all these inputs to have a better year till the next Women's Day actually happens. I would definitely love to come back and ask you how life has been this one year. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.